YouTube's new title tester is here, and we are going to take a look at how to use it. What does it look like on the back end? How does it choose a winner with the data that it garners and whatnot? And then some best practices on how to uh, best test for titles. If you're like me, you've had that situation where you're like, I've written three of the best titles ever known to man and on YouTube, but you're scared because you're like, if I choose the wrong one, uh -huh, I might be condemned to YouTube hell. This video has no shot. It is over for me in my career. That's a little dramatic, but we've all felt the anxiety of choosing the wrong title. And this is a tool that's essentially gonna allow us an opportunity to say, you have a little bit more of a chance of choosing the right one. What I'm gonna warn against though during this video is doing so many tasks with no clarity, essentially blindfolded dart throwing, we're gonna avoid that. But let's take a look at what this looks like on the back end of YouTube Studio. So this is where you would click into a video, okay, on the back end. So if you're obviously, hopefully if you're watching this video, you're somewhat familiar with YouTube Studio, you'll see a button that has not been here prior, which is A-B testing. And if you were to click it, it'll take you to this A-B testing interface where you have the three sections of title, thumbnail, title, and thumbnail. Now you might be wondering, well, that is now different than how it used to look when you did the thumbnail testing. So let me show you exactly what happens now when you go down to your thumbnail. You're gonna go down, click here, your change, download, all generated, then the A-B testing. No longer are you gonna get those three squares where you can put the three thumbnails. You're gonna go right back to this interface. Now it puts you to the thumbnail only testing section. It's the same location we were earlier, except it starts you at the thumbnail section since you're at the thumbnail. Hence, when you start the title section, it'll start you at the title section. And you do have three options. You have titles only, thumbnails only, title and thumbnails. And to just be abundantly clear, this is not, okay, if I write a new title, how athletes make money. Okay, you come over here, that's the second option. It's not like you get to test three titles, three thumbnails, and then three title and thumbnail combinations. These are all working in tandem of each other. Just to make that abundantly clear, it's not, it is a maximum of three thumbnails and a maximum of three titles. It does give you some sort of best practices on how to use their tool in their little question mark section. If you do click to learn more, they haven't made a Google support page specifically for title testing or even this A-B testing section. It still goes to the thumbnail testing section, but it says here, add an image and or a title you want to test. YouTube will see which option performs the best. Sounds like a rhyme. <laughs> Good on you, YouTube. It stops rhyming later on here, just to spoil the excitement. Wait for the results up to two weeks to see the report go to the video details page. And we're gonna show you that here in a second. Viewers will see the winning option. YouTube will automatically update your video with the test when the test is done. But remember, we ultimately can choose what we want regardless of the test's results, right? And this happens a lot of times when there's not a declarative winner, or there's a preferred, et cetera. And so that is essentially how this works. And so you would write in your titles, add your thumbnails, and you can click set tests and let this thing cook. Now let's take a look at what it looks like once the test is running. So now you have the test running, okay? And it is showing you the watch time share, which is the data metric that it's using to declare a winner, all right? And it actually gives you a little bit of insight as to why it's chosen the watch time share as the winning metric for this test. You can actually see it as you hover over the watch time percentage. How is the winning option selected? I'll read this to you just so you get the full information here. It says the winning AB test option generated the highest uh, of the video's watch time, okay? So that is how you get a winner. Why is watch time share used? Great title and thumbnail don't just get viewers to click, they also help viewers understand what the video is about so they can make an informed decision of what to watch. By selecting based on watch time share, the winning A-B test option is the one that gets viewers to both click and stay to watch. Now you're like, okay, well then why are we not doing CTR? And explains that in this final paragraph. Additionally, YouTube search and discovery systems consider both clicks and watch time when ranking videos. So what YouTube's communicating is, we're actually refactoring in CTR, and the video watch time when it comes to the ranking of the video. And so according to the, at least that last sentence of the paragraph is that this is what's best for you and the viewer. Now you can disagree with that or not. It, it is what they are at least communicating as the reasoning behind why they've decided to do it with the watch time 
share. I think ultimately uh, this data is always going to be a little bit guarded and not super clear, but it's a baked in feature that I think is best positioned prior to when the thumbnail tester is out because we really wanted the title component in addition to the thumbnail component. And so these two work in tandem. I do think you can glean a lot, even with the data not showing audience composition, not factoring in CTR. There's a couple things that are um, lacking, but you know it's not a function that we've had in the past, so this is exciting nonetheless. Now, when it comes to testing, I wanna keep this real succinct and clear, is if you just spray and pray <laughs> methodology when it comes to testing different titles with no intentionality of what you're trying to do, it's really hard to repeat those results. I know for a new channel, you're still trying to find maybe that branding voice and there's probably a better use case of trying a lot of different things. But if you're in a channel that's somewhat established, just swinging for the fences on a video is not necessarily a recipe for long-term success. It does say on YouTube, if you do something more drastic, you might get a winner selected quicker, but that doesn't mean that it's a repeatable methodology that you've implemented. We're not all in the situation of Mr. Beast where there's a chocolate factory on one, there's a bear on another, and oh heck, there's Squid Game as well. We're more in the situation of, okay, we have a, a method that works. Now we want to try to improve it and gain more information about our audience. So what I recommend when you make your titles is, what are you changing or what are you trying to do that's different than the original title written? One person I couldn't recommend enough is Jake Thomas and his creator hooks and all the stuff that he breaks down his newsletter, you can implement that same type of testing now into your videos. Are you trying to use a psychological trigger? Are you trying to make this title structure more negative to be inflammatory, maybe inciting a click? Is this one using a listicle format where it's got the numerical at the beginning? Is this one got a curiosity gap? Like I didn't know my hair was receding until this. Uh, and you should be able in a spreadsheet, in your notes, however you wanna keep track of what you're trying to do your title, say, these are the three titles, drawing a line exactly to what this title was for, what this title was for, and what this title was for, and then receiving the results. Perhaps you don't always have to do three, you can start with two. You can start with even just, I sometimes all caps word, and sometimes I don't. These methods, at the very least, help you learn about your audience, which is the whole point of A-B testing, by the way. Just doing something drastic each time, hoping that it results in something better for your channel, is like playing darts blindfolded. It's like, maybe I hit the board, maybe I don't, I don't know, but even if I hit the board, can I repeat what I just did or not? This, on the other hand, is incremental, it's intentional, and guess what, guys? It might be marginal. It might not be like, oh, wow, earth shattering information. But if you're starting to understand that, hey, my audience tends to resonate with an all caps word with a, you know, a numerical that's of a positive sentiment, well, that's a formula that you can repeat versus just randomly doing different structures and saying, well, maybe one of these works. And then you have very inconsistent data. Ultimately, I'm very excited about this tool. I hope you guys are excited about it. I would recommend using it with intentionality, but using it right away. And hopefully as a result, it leads to more success on YouTube. Thanks for watching everybody. And as always, happy creating.